The housing market has been on the brink of chaos for years at this point. It's been more volatile than in any other time in history, with interest rates being hiked harder than ever before as well. And the only people who say everything is okay are those with their heads buried in the sand. And we finally got to the point where even the banks aren't willing to be so naive anymore. Goldman Sachs and Morgan Stanley have now flipped their tune. They're worried about what is to come and they're sounding the alarm. The narrative has well and truly shifted. Rates staying higher for longer is now well accepted and this will have an impact on the housing market because it's literally impossible for it to not and over the next five minutes I'm going to explain to you exactly what's going on and what we can expect. Now, needless to say, the housing market over the last 20 years has been strange in historical terms, but over the last four years, it has been even stranger. We saw literally the strongest bull market in house prices the world has ever seen in the wake of COVID and all of those lockdowns. And this was during that exact period that every single institution and government in the world predicted that housing markets would see their greatest ever crash as the lockdowns would grind those markets markets to a halt. And while home prices did soar instead of slide, office buildings did actually see their use case dry up overnight to the point where literally trillions of dollars has now been lost on commercial office space investment with some of the biggest, most iconic buildings in the world suddenly seeing their values cut in half. Here in London, HSBC, one of the biggest banks in the world, has abandoned its iconic skyscraper worth well into the billions and there are simply no tenants around to fill up that space, a story seen literally all over the world. And so the real estate market as a whole has been in a state of limbo, with half of it crashing deeply and the other half rising to all-time highs and remaining fairly steady up there. And of course, you can't explain the current market without taking a look at interest rates at all. We know the current rate hiking cycle has been faster and firmer than ever before as we saw inflation rise to truly unacceptable levels all over the world. But investors have been incorrectly pricing in rate cuts for over a year at this point. Every single month, the mainstream media has been pumping the exact same narrative that the job is done, inflation is defeated, and rate cuts must come now or else we're all doomed. And every single month, Jerome Powell and the Fed have responded with the exact same statement, get ready for rates to stay higher for longer, firmly shooting those demands down. But that doesn't stop the demands being made, and it doesn't stop the market from pricing assets as though interest rates are about to be cut to 0% once again. But to listen to the Fed, every single month and to refuse to believe them when they say that rate cuts aren't coming anytime soon is simply deluded. Rates are going to stay higher for longer. Powell is terrified of the legacy he stands to leave behind and he's determined to make sure that no matter what, we don't see a repeat of the 1970s and 80s blamed on him. And that's the fundamental problem that is grasping our economies right now. Everything we see is based on debt and the cost of that debt has more than quadrupled over the course of a couple of years. Credit card debt, mortgage debt, student debt, hellocks and literally everything else you can name has seen volume soar over the last few years and incomes have not risen enough to make up for this. The simple fact is that home prices are a function of a market and they are determined very plainly by supply and demand. How many homes are out there right now that the owner wants to sell and how many people, institutions or individuals are out there that want to buy it. Interest rates have risen which means demand has been slumping. If you could afford a $500,000 home three years ago you probably can't even afford a $300,000 home today and that is crushing demand and while the housing market is relatively illiquid, whilst it is insulated to a degree by that illiquidity, it does not exist in a vacuum. It cannot be propped up by good spirits alone. If demand for homes drops and the supply doesn't drop by an equal or greater amount, the simple unavoidable fact is that the prices of those homes will drop regardless of what any individual's personal thoughts or opinions are. And the truth is that every institution knows this. They can't say it out loud without risking being the trigger that alerts the normal person to the precarious nature of how bad things really are. But every single bank knows exactly what is happening, exactly what's at stake, and exactly what's going to come next. And whilst they can't speak their whole minds truthfully, they have to leave a trail of breadcrumbs behind. So when everything does fall apart, they can claim that they told us all along what was going on after hiding the very information that they claimed was so blindingly obvious. Now Goldman Sachs can hide it all no longer and they have begun warning their investors and customers as to what they think is actually coming and in short, it's not good. They released their official forecast for 2024 and the focus is incredibly clear. It's literally titled, 
higher for longer and it refers to interest rates and the impact that will all have on the housing market. When it comes to how the federal funds rate impacts average mortgage rates in the US, Goldman Sachs are officially predicting that the average mortgage monthly interest rate will remain higher than 6% for new mortgages, not just throughout 2024, not even just throughout 2025 either, but well into 2026. And already, average new mortgage rates are touching close to 8%, a ridiculous increase from what we were seeing just a couple of years ago when the modern monetary theory's wheels were turning and the money printing machine was printing. And Goldman see this scenario going a certain way, as a total collapse in transaction volume across the housing market is what they see coming. They're officially expecting total home sales to drop to its lowest level in more than three decades, which is even more insane than it initially feels, because this isn't a figure adjusted per capita or a population basis. And so when the growth of the US population is taken into account, Goldman Sachs are expecting the weakest housing market with the fewest home sales in more than 50 years. And along with this grinding halt to the housing market, Goldman are expecting a very peculiar thing to happen, something that many like to call a melt up instead of a meltdown. Essentially, Goldman thinks that because everyone in the US managed to get low interest rate mortgages back when times were good, they are stuck where they are and no one can afford to move anymore. And if you do now have to move home and you need to get a new mortgage, you're likely looking at only being able to afford a home 50 to 60% cheaper than the one that you're leaving, which means downsizing or moving to a significantly less desirable place, something that very few people will be willing to accept. And as this fundamentally slashes demand for homes into oblivion, it will also drastically cut supply for homes as well, as no one's going to be selling if they can't afford to buy afterwards. So their prediction states that house prices might actually continue to rise, even above inflation at about 3 or 4% a year, which on the surface is good news to many people. But in reality, it's disastrous, because Goldman are saying a few things in isolation here. They're saying that interest rates are going to stay higher for longer, that the housing market will grind to a halt, and that housing prices will continue to rise. And what that all means together is that the problem facing the housing market is that the volume of transactions will literally drop off a cliff. And that's caused by the unaffordableness of homes. And then the cherry on top is that this crisis will cause housing prices to rise even further and become even more unaffordable. It becomes a vicious cycle, and we're not talking about this remaining a problem for a few months. The housing market is a slow and difficult beast. We're talking about this being a fundamental problem hanging over the American economy for three to four years into the future. And as long as there is no major recession, as long as there is no massive geopolitical shock or strong economic downturn, then after five or maybe ten years of this sustained problem, there might be light at the end of the tunnel. But if things don't go so smoothly, if the millions of realtors across the US seeing their income drop and the mortgage brokers and home appraisers and millions of other people whose livelihoods and jobs are dependent on that housing market, if they lose their jobs, they then risk defaulting on their loans or at the very least being forced to move somewhere cheaper. So if a recession does come within the next four or even five years, the delicate balance of supply and demand will be tipped out of whack and suddenly these 8% mortgage rates become real for millions of people and everything falls apart. To say that this entire situation is precarious is a massive understatement, especially when the world economy is so fragile right now. We are still witnessing the largest war in Europe since the Second World War wage in front of us and is looking likely to continue, but European and American sentiment regarding support for Ukraine is dropping daily and that might change and cause drastic changes. We're witnessing a massive conflict in Israel and Palestine, which has sent politicians on all sides panicking, reeling and accusing each other of everything you can imagine, and politics back home has never been so delicate. We're watching Houthi rebels, which are basically just the government of a partitioned Yemen at this point, try to cut off the world's access to its single most important waterway, and they're causing a ripple effect across our entire shipping economy because they're actually succeeding. We're seeing tensions between China and the West get worse, as China tell us time and time again that they are are going to invade Taiwan and the West responds each time, threatening war if they do that. And of course, we're watching the oil producing nations of the world drift away from American hegemony as they feel alienated and fearful of America's overbearing nature. The potential catalysts for a recession are literally everywhere and they keep popping up every single month as a new one that we never expected before. And all it takes is for one of those to spiral even just a little bit out of control. For that to impact some industry that employs people in the West, 
West and for the rest of the dominoes to fall. There are many who have looked at Goldman Sachs forecasts for the housing market over the coming years and come to the conclusion that it's good news because prices are expected to rise. But these people are forgetting the fundamental issue at play here. The rising problems are part of the problem, not the solution. The rising prices are part of the problem, not the solution. And that this is all becoming a self-fulfilling prophecy that we should be worried about. The simple fact is the wealth cannot be printed out of thin air. Money can, sure, yes, but wealth cannot. Four years ago, the idiots in charge tried to do exactly that. And ever since then, they've been driving a train faster and faster, trying to outrun their own problems. Eventually, something will break. We don't know what it will be yet, but there is simply no other way out.